an alternate translation of the very first word in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. In the Bible-believing community, most folk believe that God created the sky, the earth, and everything that lives in them. However, some believe in a young earth, which God created during six days, about 6,000 years ago, whereas others believe in an old earth, which already existed when God created Eden during six days, about 10 to 20,000 years ago. The two main biblical creationist views, then, include a young earth, God created the sky, the earth, and creatures in six days, about 6,000 years ago. Others believe in an old earth. The sky and the earth already existed when God created Eden and creatures in six days between six and 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, the English Standard Version reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Thus the Bible asserts, there is only one true God, although the name for God, Elohim, is a plural, it is singular in meaning, having a singular verb. Thus there is only one Creator, no other gods and no co-creators. There was a beginning, God created. This verb, bara, is used only of God in Scripture. And there is space, including the heavens, the sky and beyond. There is matter, including the earth and the sea. Of course, light. Darkness gave way to light. What was the light's source? And there is time, evening and morning. Let's take a closer look, then, at what God created. There is a traditional creation order. According to this view, before the beginning there was nothing. Then God created everything in the space of six days. However, the new earth was dark and empty. So God created light on day one, and then created everything else on earth in five days. This view has been displaced by a more modern creation order. Once there was nothing. But then suddenly matter and energy happened. Life then evolved on earth over millions of years, although ignorant people imagined that a god or gods made everything. However, science then informed us that there are no gods or no Bible god. However, more recent translations of the Bible render the first verse somewhat differently. The New Revised Standard Version reads, When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The first words then read, When God began to create. This then leads to a somewhat different alternate creation order. First, the sky and the earth were already there. That old earth was, or became, dark and empty. 
But God caused light to shine on day one. He then created everything on earth in five days. Although angels were already there, watching God create Eden and the other creatures. Now, which view is right? Which Bible version is more correct? The English Standard Version reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Whereas the New Revised Standard Version reads, When God began to create the heavens and the earth. Let's look at Genesis 1.1 in Hebrew, according to the Masoretic text. This is the Hebrew with which we are familiar. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Literally, in, in beginning, created God, the heavens, and the earth. Before the Masoretic text, there was the older consonantal text that had no vowel marks and no contillation or chanting guides. It looked more like this. But there was an even older Hebrew, which in Paleo-Hebrew text looked more like this. Still no vowels. Let's look at the phrase in the beginning, Bereshit. Before the 6th century BCE, it was written in Paleo-Hebrew. But after the Babylonian captivity, thus after the 5th century BCE, Hebrew was written in the more square characters borrowed from Aramaic. And then by the 10th century CE, the Masoretes had begun providing vowel marks as well as cantillation guides. Now this word, Bereshit, has three main parts. It begins with a noun, Ra'osh, which means head. To this noun was added an ending, it, which makes it an abstract noun meaning beginning. And to that is added a prefix, be, which makes it adverbial. Note that there is no definite article, the, in this Hebrew word. Let's look at this more closely. When the Jews translated verse 1 into Greek in the 3rd century BCE, they wrote, in beginning, en arche, not in the beginning, en tearche. This is why the Apostle John, 300 years later, in writing his gospel at verse 1, borrowed Enarche from Genesis 1 1 in Greek. He was perhaps hinting when he began to create all things, he already was. Now let's look at some of the main Hebrew noun prefixes. These include be, which often indicates locality or instrument. Added ha prefix to a word supplies the definite article translated the or the. Ke means comparison. Le, existence or direction, often translated to or towards. Mi, indicating source, from a thing. And we or ve often a conjunction, and, or just a clause marker, meaning a new subject and verb. Thus, bereshit means in or at a certain beginning and can be translated when he began. Another point of Hebrew grammar, when a noun is followed by text that completes it, 
the noun has no article the, and they are in a construct relation. That is, if they are both nouns, then in English we connect them with the genitive word of. For example, deber hanabi, literally word the prophet. In English we would have to say the word of the prophet or the prophet's word. For another example, see Jeremiah 26.1 a transliteration of its first words, Bereshit Amalekot Yoakim. In beginning, reign Jehoiakim, which in English becomes at the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim. Or, for a smoother translation, when King Jehoiakim began to reign, this is a construct relation between two nouns, beginning and reign, or the beginning of the reign. Now, regarding those who hold to a young earth view, young earth creationists appeal to the traditional translation of Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created. This is because some of them believe that God created the sky and the earth on day one of the creation week. And so some consider the alternate translation to be done by liberals who require millions of years for evolution, whilst others hold to an old earth view. Old earth creationists often appealed to the alternate translation of Genesis 1-1, when God began to create. This is because some of them believe that God had already created the sky and the earth by day one of the creation week. So some consider the traditional translation to be done by fundamentalists who require a six-day creation of everything. Well, can we draw a conclusion? First, the alternative better expresses the Hebrew grammar, which is ignored by traditional views. It also explains how angels were present whilst God finished creating the heavens and the earth, and allows for long geological ages and expansion of the universe, while still affirming a six-day special creation of the sky and earth in preparation for human beings. Yet there are some problems with this view. So, we shall look at four of them. First, in Genesis 1.1, there is no second noun for a construct relation. Genesis verse 2 begins with and, which requires a new separate sentence there may actually be a definite article, the, in the word Bereshit, meaning in the beginning. Fourthly, all conservative standard Bible versions retain the traditional translation. Well, let's look at the issue of no second noun for a construct relation. The issue is this. Bereshit is followed by a subject-verb clause, well, can we reply to this? First, we note that construct relations can occur between a noun and a subject-verb clause. Going back to our example, in the beginning is in a construct relation with rain, and rain in a construct relation with Jehoiakim. We shall look at another example in which there is a construct relation between beginning and Yahweh spoke. In Hosea chapter 1 verse 2, where the Hebrew reads, Beginning, Yahweh spoke to Hosea, which the New Revised Standard Version translates, When the Lord first spoke through Hosea. 
Well, what about verses 2, 3, and 4, which begin with the word and? The issue is this. Separate and sentences do make good sense. However, we can reply that Genesis chapters 1 through 6 have 140 verses. 126 of those verses begin with ve, translated and. This is good Hebrew, though poor English style. The Hebrew word ve is sometimes a conjunction and or or, but other times a clause marker which is not translated. Furthermore, 135 of those verses have two halves, which is normal in Hebrew, and most of those halves also begin with ve. Here, for example, are the first 12 verses of Genesis, reading from right to left. 11 of those verses begin with ve, and the second half of all of those likewise begin with ve indicating a new clause rather than a new sentence. The third problem is whether beginning contains the article the. Here is the issue. The prefix be can include the when it keeps the article's vowel. In reply, we note that this could have been the original case in consonantal texts which had no vowels and had to be supplied by readers. So there was the possibility that there were three words, be, ha, and reshit, which came together as ba reshit, ba keeping the vowel from the article ha, giving the translation in the beginning. However, the only proof or indication that we have of the original vowels is that of the 10th century Masoretic Hebrew text, which does have vowels. And in Genesis 1.1, be has its own vowel, indicating no presence of a definite article. And fourthly, most Bibles do indeed read in the beginning. Here's the issue. All 40 versions found on BibleHub.com have the traditional text. Are they all wrong? Well, we reply, they are not wrong. They are traditional. Remember, Bible publishers translate for conservative Christians who reject any hint of evolutionism. Likewise, Bible publishers seek to avoid controversy, which may cost them market share. On the positive side, remember, Bible publishers want to evangelize, and the traditional translation seems sufficient for that purpose. Mm-hmm.